You're watching Moms Matter at EverTalk TV, where we hope to engage and inspire you with our incredible guests. Today in the studio with me, I have Angela Nazarian, who's a best-selling author. She's a speaker, a professor, a mom, and a wife. She just published her fourth book, Creative Couples, and she's here with us today to inspire all of you. So congratulations and welcome to the studio. Thank you so much. Happy to be here. You are seriously such a powerhouse of a woman, not because of all your accolades and not because you teach and not because of all these great books, but because you really take it and you inspire and you engage us to really become better and to reflect. And your book, I have to be honest, has really made me think about my own relationship and how to improve it. And I wanna know what inspired you to write Creative Couples. Well, thank you for that question. I also felt that while I was doing the research, that I was trying to figure out what is it that I also need to do in my own relationship to be a better partner. But more, more importantly, I feel that there needs to be a national discourse around connection, relationship building, and how men and women can bridge this gap that is occurring right now. While I was writing my third book, and I've written two books on women's leadership, and I have a women's leadership nonprofit here called Visionary Women, it was so evident to me that the next step in the conversation for feminists, for women who are empowered, is to think about how they relate to men, the partners in their lives, their brothers, their fathers, all the men, the, the mentors. And I began doing the research far before the Me Too movement. So I think that right now it's the prime time for us to really figure out how we can move side by side together in partnership. And I, and I love that, and I got that from so many of these stories that you shared. But I feel like we're always searching for, we, we love romance and we love yeah. these love stories, and we're always searching for like the secret sauce. Right. And in the research you did, because I know you did a lot of research yeah. to create this book, it's so thought provoking. Was there a secret sauce in these relationships? Is there something? Yeah, I do think there is. I mean, not a, just one particular thing. There are a few things. I think number one is that a relationship is there to serve its purpose. And the purpose is for the person's growth. Mm. So if you approach a relationship with a conscious awareness that you're relating and you're working out your own stuff, your own baggage, you'll be far more successful. One of the things that I saw when I was doing this research and I had over 400 source materials that I went through is that we run into the trouble in that middle passage. When you have all the passion and all the attraction is going on, mm -hmm. you project so much of this fantastic things and attributes onto the, sec you, the person that you're relating to. Right. And then the middle passage is a place where you need to renegotiate things because you will see the reality of the person and they will see the reality of you. So you serve as mirrors for that relationship. Mm -hmm. And where do you take it from there? And some of the things that I always say, one of the most beautiful quotes is that it's not for the lack of love that relationships don't uh, prosper. It's actually for the lack of friendship. Mm. So it is about being aware of the other person's needs, that every relationship is a series of everyday problem solving. Every relationship is a series of trade-offs and you need to be very realistic. Right. And you have to have that same passion for that person to be listened to and you listen back again Shoot. and working things out. So it's that's the real, you know, I think that all these fairy tale stories give us the wrong impression of what a relationship is. And profound relationships require a lot of love and a lot of work. A lot of work. Yeah. That's what I took away from this. It's a lot of work. And I have to tell you, so many of the stories were not traditional. Absolutely. And it was incredible because you took a lot away from it. One of the more untraditional, traditional relationships that actually got me in tears was when I read about Ruth Bader and Martin Ginsburg. Oh, I think, I mean, I think they're the most inspiring mm -hmm. couple in, in the entire book. And I understand because, you know, when you get to the uh, last page mm -hmm. and you're reading what Marty Ginsburg left for Ruth as she was going to try, you know, she was going mm -hmm. to court, he didn't even want to bother her so that she could be right. so focused. 
But there is the giveaway, the takeaway from that chapter is that here are two people who were real equals. Right. They were true right. equals. They saw each other and they saw each other's soul. And they knew each other's soul mission. And what was so beautiful is that when, it, may I talk a little bit about their no, relationship? Please do. It, honestly, I got tears in my eyes again now. Yeah. I did it when I read it the first time. Yeah, I think it is so profound. Please so talk about profound. it because I think it's something we can all relate to. I know. And I cried when I was right. reading through certain passages of their relationship. You know, when they met, they went to Harvard Law School together and he had cancer. He contracted cancer. She would go to his classes, take notes and sit and would do the homework with him. This is the kind of empowered relationship. And then when he got the big job, she actually moved to New York for him. So there's a lot of things that people don't know about this relationship, that it was a series of, you know, trade-offs of, I'll support you now. Oh, now I need the support. And when it was for her to run for uh, justice, chief justice, not ch chief justice, a Supreme Court, um, position. He was in the background completely, completely not only supporting her, but he was one of the reasons she got elected. Incredible. And I think he came from a place of strength because he, before that, he was a partner in his law, uh, law firm, that he was super successful. He never thought that her success meant the lack of success for himself. That is the biggest takeaway. I think that is so important for everyone to hear that. That's so profound. Right. It's not a sum zero game. No. It's not. No. And he felt so enriched that in his letter, his last letter before he went to the hospital and didn't come back, was that he said that his mission in life was really to support her. Mm -hmm. And I think about how incredibly depthful and profound that statement is. It really is. It really is. And it's utter commitment to one another. That's another key thing. Don't you find it that commitment to a relationship is half the battle? Of course. Absolutely it is. Right. So from all of these 15 couples, yeah. Ginsburg and, uh, you know, being one of the biggest, yes. you know, huge profound relationships, what is one key element that you took away that you want to share with our viewers today that you really think is a change, changes the game in relationships? I, I think that, you know, I was very inspired by the story of uh, uh, Lou Reed and, um, and Lori Anderson. And I think that we have a tendency to peg relationships that if it is a certain kind, they need to be cohabiting, living together all the time. Right. It, you know, we make it into uh, a love story, but the love story is actually about how do you work with another person in your life over a long-term period where you transform each other. And I think that both of them were transformed through their relationship in a very, very meaningful way. And what is also very touching about that is, I think, you know, she still relates to Lou, although Lou, who's an icon, was an icon, passed away, that she still feels a depth of a relationship and connection with him on a daily basis, even today. Right. And shows an openness of heart a sensitivity to another human being and a sort of gratitude to let somebody into your life and see how you can have that alchemical reaction happening that you draw gold from it. That's beautiful. Yeah. And I'm assuming that you have that with your husband, which is why you dedicated the book to him. Yes. Oh, and you know, I've, I've known David ever since my late uh, teenage years. Oh. So I always think that I've been so lucky, so lucky because he has helped me become a better person, a whole person, not only because of his support, but also because he gave me a lot of space to even understand my own individuality mm -hmm. and my own personhood within the couplehood. And how beautiful is that, that over the three decades that we've been able to do that. And I hope I do the same for him. And I'm still learning. I mean, I honestly think that there is no perfect relationship. But what I have, I love. And I want to work 
to make it even better. It's incredible. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for sharing all your research. Your book is beautiful. And I'm sure everyone watching today has felt inspired. And I hope you all go out and you pick up Creative Couples. You saw it right here on EverTalk TV, Angela Nazarian. And we'll see you all next time on Moms Matter.